Hello everyone, today gonna be running you guys through uh Vet Cradle of Shadows speedrun. Now don't be fooled by the uh length of the video. I actually just did this because having terrible Australian internet means that uploading long videos can take upwards of a couple of days, so in order to keep this one at a decent length I had to basically fast forward the uh trash fights. I figured they weren't too interesting, there's not too much to them. In general, like the main things I tank you want to be doing is taunting the two-handers and also chaining and uh, talonsing and everything else. Also on fights uh, with the statue in the middle that you can see there, you want to bring everything there and just burn it down to stop the meteor coming and the uh, adds getting empowered. So not too much um, in regards to mechanics or difficulty. Obviously with lower DPS it's going to be more difficult and it will stress your resources. I also uh, wasn't sure with my build video I released before if that was perhaps a little bit too unexciting or monotone so to speak. Didn't know how exci uh, excited I had to be really, but um, I think the information contained within it is still really good so hopefully you don't find it too boring. Anyways, the first boss is coming up. So this boss is pretty simple, all you need to do is pull her into the light, the brazier, and DPS her down. She does have a mechanic which you need to interrupt, which is with the red sparklies, very easily seen. I do miss it here because the boss was pulled before I was ready, but apart from that, nothing too much. A lot of adds do spawn. If you can, if you have the resources, talons them, change them into the light because they don't take any damage or at least very little damage when they're outside the light. The light is also going to periodically disappear over time, so when that does, just make sure you taunt the boss so you don't lose taunt and head over to the other light, and you pretty much just go back and forth between the two lights, relighting the other one, as you'll see shortly. So yeah, as I was saying, um, just challenging in these ads, as I have extra resources and interrupting the mechanic there. If you do chain them in, it really helps out with uh, the healer, he doesn't have to worry too much about healing because all the ads are cleaned up, which is nice. And yeah, the light goes out here, so we head back to the uh, first brazier, and then finish the boss. Really quite a simple fight, not too much to it. The only thing I can say is perhaps in a lower DPS group you might have adds overwhelming you, which can be a problem and put a lot of strains on the heals, though hopefully you guys can still get it down. So yeah, that's that. Once again, we're just fast forwarding the trash. I didn't really mention it, but similar to the boss fight, you do need to drag everything into the light, otherwise it takes reduced damage. And um, if it wasn't already apparent, this is the build that I produced a video for a few, couple of days ago. So feel free to check that out if you're interested in how it works. Pretty much the uh, main idea behind it is just heavily focused on magical regen, enabling igneous shield, chains, and talons spam to really help with group utility. Alright, so here's the next fight. Basically, what I do, uh, forget to do here, is slot a gap closer, and that's important because she will periodically teleport, and when she does, you need to gap close and interrupt the mechanic, which sparkles red. If you don't, it can do a lot of damage to the group. A few other mechanics, which you saw just then, is a heavy attack. You want to be facing the boss away, because even though it doesn't look like it, if a DPS is standing in right beside you in front of the boss, it will one-shot them. And likewise, if you do not block it and do not have your resistances up, it's going to do a lot of damage to you and, well, without block, definitely one-shot you. She also does a large AoE, which is very easy to move out of. It's actually got quite a long time before it uh, goes off, so there's not too much worry there. With respect to some other mechanics, adds do spawn. Try your best to help out if possible, but they do have quite low HP, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. As you see there, I got stuck, stuck by the adds and I couldn't quite get in time to interrupt. But fortunately, I do manage to make it for most of the uh, times to interrupt it. So I mean, a gap closer isn't necessarily essential, but makes your job a lot easier, and, well, it looks nice as well. So yeah, here there's no brazier lit, so I have to kind of move the boss. Luckily she teleports to one, and I managed to interrupt just in time, which is good. So as you've seen, the braziers do go out periodically. It's up to your group to light them. One of the things I've done in the past is try to light it, if the boss is beside one, and uh, you'll see this actually in a little bit where see both braziers go out, so I have to make a decision, do I go light it? And so I quickly check, and the boss is doing a heavy attack, and if I had lit that brazier just then, the boss would actually have one-shot me, because uh, lighting the brazier interrupts block. 
So it's really important to not panic too much and to just take your time and be aware of what's happening in that fight. It's really a rinse and repeat. So once you get the the damn pat mechanic of her teleporting back and forth and just moving with her and relighting braziers, it's not too bad. So this is just a little trash fight. It's pretty much the same as all the others. Go to the statue, taunt the two-hander, um, and just AoE down. Unfortunately, this dungeon can actually be quite tedious with uh, lower DPS groups, as the empower on the ads can make things quite difficult. So this boss here is pretty much like normal spindle clutch. The boss will periodically drag you in and then do an AoE. That AoE is going to one-shot you no matter what, so you really need to move out. As soon as you see the telegraph like that, she's going to pull you in. So right now I get pulled in. As soon as that happens, just roll out and walk out, and you should be fine. You shouldn't die. She also spawned some adds um, in between the pull phase, which slow you down and make a little poison. There's also little poison AoEs on the ground. You want to move out of those. This fight can sort of descend into madness if uh, some people start dying, but... In a decent group, it shouldn't really be an issue. Probably the easiest boss out of the uh, five in the dungeon. This boss here is actually a quite enjoyable. There's a few mechanics. Um, I'll just talk about that while we wait for the fight to start. Basically, the first mechanic is that he'll do this sort of small AoE flurry. Flurry is the wrong word, but small AoE attack. It's going to do a lot of damage to DPS, it's important you don't move the boss into them while doing that or they will die. Also periodically meteors are going to come from the ground like just then, and they're going to blow up and do a lot of AoE damage, so you need to be careful. And that there was a flurry uh, just then. Then he's going to do this at certain health, um, he's going to split into free adds and during that time he's invulnerable. So what I like to do is chain them all in, and by doing that it makes the uh, adds a lot easier to kill because you need to activate the little orbs in order to remove his invulnerability which I finished the last one right here. Now that was rather inefficient. If you can, you can chain it in so he does it automatically, which actually doesn't require you to move at all really. But I really recommend chains for this fight. A DK is really nice in that regard because it doesn't force your group to move around and actually get them themselves. This here is a mechanic where he puts you on the ground after doing four teleports to the group and putting little sigils, and the DPS have to interrupt the two little adds that spawn behind you, otherwise you get one shot with a heavy attack. Really an important mechanic to explain to the group because I've had many times where people haven't really been on the same page and want, and uh, consequently you die and it's not a great feeling considering you're rather helpless. One thing I can say about that mechanic is that you can actually pop magma shell just before you get stunned and that'll actually allow you to live if you uh, or perhaps don't have too much faith in your group. Right here I did apply taunt before but for some reason it didn't go off, there was a little bit of lag going on weirdly, so it didn't go to the uh, other DPS. That's another thing, you need to keep taunt, otherwise it will apply to another DPS. And unfortunately our healer got dropped by two AoEs hitting at the same time. Kind of bad luck considering it's the only death of the dungeon. So as you see I'm chaining them in. Chaining the adds in. And the boss absorbs them by himself just then. So now that's done. You've seen there's been free splits, so you have to do free splits adds, and now the boss is pretty much dead. It's worth noting, on this final phase, you want to pull the boss to that part of the room, so the back of the room, because the AoE in the center does increase with little spirals coming out, so that can be quite nasty. Um, the reason you hold the boss in the middle at the start for the first two add phases is because you can pull them in really easily, and you're not too far away from the spawns. So you minimize movement, which in turn increases DPS, because a lot of DPS rely on dot builds, which uh, are reliant on staying still. So these trash fights here, you saw the Ogrim. It's really important with that to make sure the Ogrim is turned away from the group because he does this sort of AoE bile attack. So right here you turn him away from the group. If that hits the group it does a lot of damage, applies a dot. It's really really strong, can really wipe some groups of um, lower heals. Sometimes, so yeah I, I make it go the other way there. Sometimes it will actually, well at least in my ping, face in a random direction occasionally which is just frustrating and can hurt your group a lot but for the most part it works pretty well. In order to stop yourself from getting hit, it is really useful to side strafe um, the Ogrim. That way he misses his attack. So after this, the next fight that's coming up is the final boss. Um, we're not doing hard mode in this video, because we want to try and get a speedrun in, which we do successfully get. Not really a spoiler considering the title of the video, but 
Uh, Villa Drift on normal mode has a few mechanics. Uh, the first mechanic uh, in regards to tanking it is she'll do a heavy attack. You want to make sure you're blocking that, which is pretty common sense. Uh, she also does like a little exsanguigate um, debuff, which you can roll dodge. I have been experimenting. I haven't noticed too much of a difference between roll dodging and not, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really depends on how my stamina is looking. She also spawns little uh, spheres, floating spheres, uh, which uh, are either red, blue, or green. And if you get hit by one, it does a corresponding debuff to your health, magic, or stamina. As a tank, you can try and intercept these to help your group not get hit by them. Though I will note, I think the health, the uh, red little bubble, is very detrimental to the tank as it interrupts uh, self-heals. At least that's what I uh, think is the case. She also has a mechanic where she steals your ultimate, so it's important to try and dump your ult as much as possible. Here the boss gets pulled before I'm ready by a DPS, so I kind of wait a little bit to get aggro just so I can get my warhorn off. I really don't want her stealing ultimate. When she does get enough ultimate, she's going to say don't move, and she's going to go up into the sky uh, on top of the ceiling. You really don't move at all. If you do, on normal mode, you probably won't get one shot, but almost. So what you want to do is just stand still, and then when the screen goes back uh, to normal color, because it will darken when she's up in the sky, you want to roll dodge. If you have really good ping, you can wait until she's about to fall out of the sky and then roll dodge, and I'll make sure you don't die. But for myself, I like to wait a little bit after the screen goes white and roll dodge twice. That's just because of my ping uh, can be unreliable um, using visual cues, because sometimes things have already happened on the server side. Also, uh, Atronach spawn. Uh, alongside other adds, you want to try and taunt these, chain them in, talons them as much as you can to help your group not get damaged. When the Atronax die, one DPS each picks up a light, and as you can see, we're in a maze now. So this teleport phase happens twice. You need to go through the maze, following your DPS, and hopefully they uh, have a good idea of where to go. If not, just explain it. In general, you can go from left to right on the map. That should ensure that you get through pretty safely. It's not too much of a big deal on normal because almost all the doors are open, but in hard mode it can be a big deal, especially since RNG means that a lot of the doors can be locked, so it's important to have good pathing. Obviously, as you see adds spawn and chase you periodically. It's best not to kill them if you can avoid it, just talons them, um, taunt them, shield your ally, and that way you get through. Also nice to check your map to make sure your other um, two party members are near the door. You don't want to drop damages too if you, that can be really disastrous and wipe a group. We do go down a little bit early here, but it's okay because I pop magma and taunt the adds so that my other DPS isn't going to take too much damage. And obviously the healer arrives momentarily. So yeah, there's the spheres, you see there, the green spheres. So once again she's went up in the sky and the screen goes dark. And when it goes white, well, I say white, but when it goes normal colour again I'll roll twice. And I'll miss the other spike and not get damaged. And the mechanic you saw just then was a heavy attack and also the little pin to pincer attack, which applies the debuff. I didn't roll it this time, but you can do if you wish. And yeah, once again, just taunting up all the adds. Oh yeah, another mechanic, sorry, I forgot to mention, just reminded me then, is there will be periodically a chain, purple chain, similar to Vet Fungal Grotto on the uh, second boss. You just need to move away from uh, whoever you're chained with to break it. can be rather frustrating sometimes if people aren't aware of it, especially for melee DPS, because as a tank, if you're trying to move away um, and you're moving the boss in melee DPS, if they're not aware, we'll just run after and the chain won't end. It's happened quite a few times. But just explain it to the group, I'm sure they'll realise. doesn't happen all too often. And yeah, once again, we're getting sent down for the second split. Much more rinse and repeat. As a tank, it's worth noting if your DPS does forget to pick up the light, it is possible to get back, though difficult. And what I'd recommend is just applying your uh, survivability buffs, so your shuffle and your armor, and try and get 200 ultimate and a perps halfway, because you can light some braziers. You see right there to your left, there's a brazier, so you can light some of them to help with you uh, remove the debuff that applies the damage over time effect. And if you pop magma shell, you can actually make it back as a tank. So you don't really have to worry too much, though it is kind of difficult, and you obviously need dragon blood. Uh, Vigor won't be enough heals to help you through. It's worth noting, I don't think I made it too apparent um, in the build video before, but I really do prefer dragon blood, at least with my build, because it's really magical regen focused. I think I've had more stamina than I would really uh, 
I prefer, in some ways, Vigor. It's just that I feel like my stamina is much better used on other things and that I can get enough healing um, and enough utility from chains and talons that I don't really need to use Vigor too much. As it is, some DPS use it anyways, so you don't have to worry. And it's just pointless stacking at that time. See how the boss dies, um, the achievement pops, the speedrun exterminator achievement. I uh, very smoothly type slash clap <laughs> in a second, mess it up, but yeah, worthy of a celebration. I think it was a really nice run, took about 25 minutes in total, so that was really nice. Alright, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the run. If you want any other sort of runs in the future, just let me know, I'll be happy to make them for you. Other than that, I appreciate any support you guys give me, and uh, yeah, I look forward to making more videos. Bye for now.